Hey, this is Fanta. So I decided to I decided to just make like a progression tier list. Um, it was just I, I thought I'd do it just for fun. Um, just kind of it's kind of my own perspective of how to like progress through the game. And if you've been following me for a long time, ever since like ever since I started playing games like Summoner's War, like you know four or five years ago. Um, I've been really good at like progressing through these types of games like really really fast you know like even in in like Monster Super League as well just like I can get through get through a lot of stuff you know optimize my resources and everything like super super fast and I, I think you know when after talking to some people like on on the on their discord um, that I'm probably like one of the fastest players to like progress in this game to like reach max level unlock everything and um you know be like top rank and pvp all that stuff and like in like the shortest possible amount of time um so today what i'm going to do is i'm just going to talk about which units are kind of the best for progression this is like progression only okay so this has like nothing to do with like late game pvp clan battle or anything like that this is purely if you want to like get through the game as humanly fast as possible um these are this is my this is my recommendation my tier list um what i will show is this do i have the right one all right this one this one's a win no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move it okay i decided to put together a tier list maker although i was planning originally to show it in game but i thought having like this tier list maker and having a link would be pretty cool. I could just put this in the, this exact link in the description, and you can click it and see the the characters. Um, they this tier list does not include like the newest summer characters. They it only includes the, some of the characters from before, and I'll just kind of um, I'll just kind of talk through each one, each tier. So the the at the very top, oh, actually at the very bottom, these are irrelevant characters. Okay, these are like. Um, they're probably good on other parts of the game like some of them are really good on other parts of the game but they're either like too expensive to raise early on or they're like just not suitable for clearing maps and progressing okay they, they could be really good at other parts of the game like for example um, like uh, Kasumi she, she has like an insane magic debuff so she, she has like the highest magic debuff in the game which is like really really unnecessary for progressing in the game through the game because enemies don't have that much magic defense so this is like an example all right so it's like just really unsuitable for progress progression so at the over here is like irrelevant just in, they're not good for progression um not a good idea is like they're not good for progression for various reasons because either they're hard to raise they require like like Ilya, for example, like she is just unusable unless you get her to at least four stars. Even then, she's still somewhat pretty unusable. Like mine's only four star, and she's kind of like pretty no no for me right now. Like she she basically you have to have her at five stars to use her. So it's like very very um, unsuitable for progression. And some of them are like debuffers. And then like Rima, she she only runs in after like the second move. So sometimes the the one in your front would like take a huge hit from from the enemy before she even runs in, which increases the risk of you wiping um, when you're progressing. But she has like various utility, like her that mechanic has like a very unique utility in PvP, so she's still usable there. But like th these units over here are still very very unsuitable for progression. But like if you have nothing to use, um, they can kind of help because some of them still do damage and stuff. So it's not like you know, it's not completely irrelevant, but not really a good idea. So I just, this is like, not a good idea tier, all right? <laughs> this is not a A, B, C, D tier list. This is a <laughs> irrelevant, not a good idea. And a can be useful sometimes tier. Um, can be useful sometimes is like, like, you can use them and they're viable. Like, it can work, but it's like, not really recommended. It's just... Like there are better options, but if you have nothing to use, like it's, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, for example, I, I use like Misaki, 
when I'm when I was on my mage team when I'm like progressing on my magic team. Um, and she's like a she's basically like a PvP unit. Like she's got debuffs, um, you know, frontline AOE slow and just like utility and AOE damage, um, which is not too good for AOE magic damage and like the front line, which is not like too good for for progressing, but she's still like usable. Um, like it's just not really recommended. Same thing with like Orisa. There's like better damage dealers, and it's hard to like harder to raise because certain characters are harder to raise than others. Um, for example, like uh, Nozomi over here, she you you can get her pieces really easily, so you can get her to five stars like super super fast. So you have like a very reliable tank early on if you just raise her which is why she's like i put her so high up although there's like better tanks to use um she's just very very easy and good to use and will take you through like every single stage you, you pretty much use her as a tank on like every single stage so she's like kind of put up there um but over here it's just like they they're okay they're decent you can use them as damage dealers but they're like not really the best okay so I decided to put them here. Um, and over here is, will make life easy. Okay, so these, these characters are like, if you have them, it'll make your progression pretty easy. Um, on certain stages, like some of them are, will will actually carry you through, through that stage. Like just very, very niche sometimes. Um, for example, like Rin, she has like a, she has like a heal and a magic debuff. And she has like two magic debuffs. So if the enemy has like really, really um, huge magic damage, you can actually use her to mitigate a lot of the magic damage. So she has like a very, very niche use. Um, and if you have her raised, then you can always just put her in in those situations, right? Um, same thing with Monica, for example, like uh, Monica has like a huge speed buff at the beginning of battle. It only lasts the first 20 seconds and she never casts that again. So if you want to like burst through something really really fast like right in the beginning, then use use like Monica and she she can she can help you with that. Um, the other the other characters over here are also damage dealers. They're just like not top tier damage dealers, but like still pretty good damage dealers that you can use to to kill stuff. Um, and some of them are tanks, and some of them. Yeah, they're just like useful characters that you can use to progress but not like really necessary um and some of them have like very niche situation like you use them in very niche situations um i think two things i i want to mention is um is rin and shinobu they're they're like the only two farmable like easily farmable physical debuffers there's not a lot of them in the game and if you're running a physical team and you don't have like a physical debuffer for like boss fights, it's it's gonna be really, really hard to kill bosses. So it's pretty recommended to to raise them if you don't have Makoto, which is over here. Um, the tier over here is can clear 90% of maps. So if you have these units, you can basically just run them through 90% of, of everything and they'll be able to clear it very easy. Um, Jun is like a very versatile tank. She is really good for progression because she has she has a um like a physical physical defense debuff and she can heal she can she can tank both physical and magical damage um she has like a shield her 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 union burst is a shield that absorbs both physical and magical damage so she's like a very very versatile tank that you can use for anything um, the, her only downside is her fragments are not easy to farm until later on in the game. Um, so in the beginning, if you have her as three stars, she can carry you through like the early parts of the game. And then at mid game, um, it gets a little bit harder unless you like r keep her rank always like at the highest rank with like um, fully upgraded equipment, um, or else it's it's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, some of these are like limited characters, like swimsuit Kiaru. she's like the best magical single target debuffer plus dps like she's super good um valentine shizu is like a really good support just 
and she can heal as well, it just makes life super easy. Um, Nozomi is like the easily, most easily farmable tank in the game. So if you have her, you should just just use her. You can just keep using her, keep buying her fragments from the dungeon shop, and get her to um, rank, rank, or not rank five, but like five stars as quickly as possible. And because like using a five star tank will be better than using a three star tank. So because of how easily farmable she is, um, it makes life super easy. Like if you, if you have a five star tank, you can just, you can tank through pretty much anything in the map. Like if you have a five star tank, it just, it can get you through the, you know, from the first to the last map, just, just using her. Um, Makoto is very, 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 very good for fighting bosses. In the early game, you won't notice it that much, but as you kind of get to like map, uh, after like map 14, um, maybe maybe around map 18 or so, or 17 or 18 or so, um, some of the bosses get really, really annoying. And having like a strong physical debuff, putting putting that on the boss will just increase their, their, um, their armor and then you can just kill them a lot faster. Just having her like in boss fight is just night and day difference. There's like there's no comparison. Having her in a in a boss fight is just like in in clan battles where there, where you're just fighting the boss and stuff, like she's just used in every single team. Like it's just there's no replacement. Like her physical um physical defense debuffs are just the best in the game. So having her is 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 really good. Um will will get you through a lot of the game that's why you, if you look at mine mine is like raised all the way to full like i put all my resources into her because she just carries me through through the boss fights and around mid game you'll most like most of the time you'll be stuck on bosses you won't be stuck on the normal stages you'll be 90 percent of the time you'll be stuck on the boss stages which makes her super super good um if you played uh <laughs> if you play grand blue fantasy you'll know who she is um she she has a very very you'll notice some characters on here are like hmm i see I, I see that from another game or another anime like like over here like why, why is there a rem right they, they did it they, they actually did a collab with rezero which is why there's like rem and amelia i don't know why amelia wasn't included but rem was here rem and ram were here but amelia wasn't um amelia i would put her as as like will make life easy rank yeah pro probably put, put her there um but yeah she she does really good damage um she's also like a she's basically a support or actually she's a damage dealer that has like a really strong support ability that increases the the tp bar which is like the blue bar of all the characters so she's like really good like she, she does a lot of damage and supports really well it's just just really awesome um pudding is like the strongest physical physical um like physical tank like she basically tanks physical damage like it's nothing she's got the highest physical defense in the game she's got the highest evasion in the game um she can go invincible for a few seconds and then after she goes invincible she increases her own evasion even more so she has like really high evasion really high um armor and she basically is the best physical damage or physical physical damage tank in the in the game um she tanks she tanks physical damage like it's it's just like like it really really like it's nothing um her weakness is magical damage so if you're fighting enemies that use a lot of magic damage she's not ideal but but 80 percent of the time or actually 90 percent of the time you'll be fighting mostly physical damage enemies which is why she is very very suitable for for using as a tank um and she's only two stars so if you have like no other tanks in the game, like just just use pudding. She's she's really good. Um, the other is Kyoka. She is probably the highest single target damage dealer in the game. If you if you have no if you already have debuffs, she just hits really really hard. Um, really nothing else. She just hits super hard. So so she just hits really really hard. Um, yeah. And the other is um, Eriko. Eriko is the highest single target damage physical damage dealer in the game um she hits crazy crazy hard like when when, she, when you get her unique equip it has like a special effect that like increases her crit damage by four times and increases her attack by like 
like nine or ten thousand at like max rank. So it just it's it's just insane. Like her normal attack would would be at like five k, but it would basically like triple her attack and give her like four times crit damage. So she she just hits really really hard. Like she hits super hard. Um, my biggest regret was actually not raised not having her ready early on because having her will make your life really easy for like events or certain bosses or like clearing the dungeons um just really really nice to have because she she just does damage like she just does insane damage um so just having her getting her fragments early like starting to collect her fragments early is a super super good idea like once you unlock her node on hard mode um when there's like no events up you should you should farm it you should farm her her fragments as early as possible to to rank her up um, the other is, is are the are the three supports over here Yui, Yukari, and Misato. Um, Yui is like a, a AOE heal. She heals like the entire team, and she is mostly used when the enemy has a lot of physical damage because she has a physical defense buff for for all for the entire team. And Misato is kind of like the magic version. So uh, Misato has a magical defense. Or magical defense Ma misato has a lot of buffs actually but she has a magical defense buff she also has a magical damage and a magical crit buff so on a magic team you would you would want to use her and also if the enemy has a lot of magic damage you would also want to use her because she has the the magic defense buff so basically i would always run one of these two um or i used to run always run one of these two when i was progressing and when the enemy has a lot of physical damage, I would put in Yui. When the enemy has a lot of magical damage, I would put in Misato, basically. And then Yukari is like a very, very strong um, single target healer. So I like to have one team heal and one single target heal on the team. This way, like if somebody, if one person gets too low, I don't have to use the team heal to heal that single person up. I can keep that person healthy with, um, with a single target heal. And she also has like a magic shield and a TP TP boost, so it's it's pretty good. Like she she does quite a lot, um, but early, early on or around mid game or so, um, she'll help you th get through a lot of stages. So having these three healers is like pretty much a must. Like if you have no other healers, having these three is like pretty much a must. Um, the other two over here is Tomo. Tomo is like a her focus is AoE damage, so she does like a, she does a lot of, basically like her skill rotation uses her first skill, which is like an AoE damage skill, a lot. So she does a lot of physical AoE damage. Um, if it's like multiple targets, she does like crazy, crazy amounts of damage. And she also does more damage the more targets there are. So you, you want to use her to clear like story stages where there are like no bosses and stuff. Um, she can also be used on certain boss stages in boss stages that where it's like there's a few enemies and the boss as well she she does really really well um, her damage on a single target is still decent so you can still use her if you just have her as a dps you can use her for pretty much anything like so you can use her to 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 um to do aoe damage which she does best and she still does decent single target damage so a very very good unit to raise um, the other is Christina. You can only get Christina during the Princess Festival. She's another limited character. Um, she is probably one of the most reliable damage dealers in the game because her her Union Burst is a guaranteed crit and a guaranteed hit. It will never miss and it will never not crit. It will every single it will always crit every single time and it will never miss. So um, if you want like you know. If you want consistent, very high damage, then she's she's the go-to character. She also has a physical um, physical defense debuff, which is very important if you're if you want to do damage. So she's a very consistent, very reliable character. Um, just and does a lot of damage. So so um, having her is 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 also very preferable. And the tier over here on top is just I, I named it pretty much playing with hacks on. Okay, pretty much playing with hacks on. So if you have like um, uh, Moimi plus Yui, it's just like you just 
like you know back in the day when i was playing like when i had like playstation when i was a kid and i i played playstation i used like you know game shark to like give myself like you know infinite lives and just like max damage and everything it's just that's pretty much it like if you have her it's just if you have her it's like if you have Moimi, it's like having a cheat code with like your character having like max damage turned on with game shark all right and then if you have like new year yui it's like you have a cheat code that makes you invincible all right so it's just if you if you have these two it's basically like playing with hacks on you just you you just go through the entire game like you know you wondering why why people are stuck on stages you're like Hmm, I wonder, you know, why, why, there's people talking about being stuck on bosses and stages and stuff like that. I wonder what that is, right? You just, you just never get stuck. You just plow through everything. You know, the only reason you would get stuck is like, you didn't raise them high enough. So you just pour all your resources into them and they'll just like, you know, sh she'll just cleave through everything and then she'll just heal your team and keep them like 100% invincible all the time. Um, yeah. Um, basic, basically, what makes Moimi so strong is when she uses her Union Burst, she goes into like, you know, if you if you if you got if you ever watch like Bleach, you, you know, when they're like, when their swords transform, you know, into like Bunkai, you know, it's it's basically what that is. She goes into like fucking Bunkai mode, and then she just like cleaves everything like it's butter. You know, she has like just maximum AOE damage. Like, she, like her her hits become like full AOE. And it's still like the highest single target at the same time, so it's just like it's it's just it's just like with with like max damage hacks on basically if you have her, and then um, Yuri Yui is like she puts like a giant shield on your allies and puts a hot on them, so it's basically like it mitigates all the damage, and it just heals everybody to full all the time, so it's just like your entire team's just invincible all the time. Um, it's it, it's pretty rigged, but I don't have those two, so I, I I don't know what what it was like. But if you go on the map and you look at like the recommended team, if you go over here, and you can you can take a look at like the recommended team of what people are running for certain stages. Like just look at this. All right, this one this one's like recent, but but you look at these and you like you see like Mimi, you your Yui. You, you see a pattern here, right? You see a pattern? Do you see the pattern? Right, like some of the, some people have both of them. Some people only have one of them, and then when they have both of them, they use both of them. Right, so you see you see the pattern. You see the pattern, right? And then not 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 just this. You see the stage before, right? Right? Do you see the pattern? <laughs> Do you see the pattern yet? Right. Right. If we go into hard mode, it's it's even more apparent. Right. Go into hard, hard mode. All right, this, this a lot of people clear those with the magic team because the boss is afraid of magic damage. But you, you do see a pattern here. You see a lot of this, right? A lot of this. If you go over here; it's the same thing as well, <laughs> right? You, you'll always see something pop up, right? And even with um, Jun and Makoto, I think Jun and Makoto should be like a tier in between. I almost think those two should be in a tier in between. Like, kind of in between these two. Because these two are, are, are really, really good. Like, out of all the non-limited characters, having these two early on, which is what I re-rolled for, which is why I progressed super fast. Which is why I didn't have to raise Nozomi, because I just used Jun. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like, just having these two is also... I think that they could be, like, in a tier in between. I should add a tier in between, just be like... You can clear 99% of maps. <laughs> you know? Having having those two, um, but they're not all really needed. Like you don't you don't need them. It, they just make life even easier. So that's pretty much it. That's my progression. This is my progression tier list. Um, some people might not agree with me. Some people like these units. I really don't know too much about. Like some of them I never even used and never even seen. So you know they could be really good. I I don't know. I just I, I never I never even considered using them. So you know you probably don't need them either. Um, but yeah, the uh, kind of the final thing that I want to uh, mention is damage, um, doing damage in this game. Like 
if you want to do good damage in this game, having having a defense debuff is extremely, extremely important. Um, if you're playing the normal stages, like they're not really a challenge, but most of the time people are going to get stuck on bosses. So, and bosses have much higher defense. So having some sort of defense debuff is extremely, extremely important to kill the bosses, um, which is why Jun and Makoto are like super high because they both have physical damage debuffs. Um, and then like Kiara is like almost like the magic version of Makoto, but she is a limited character. So not a lot of people or not everybody has, has her. Um, but basically re-rolling for Makoto and if like the festival is up you can re-roll for for these two like if this the the time or the season calls for it you can re-roll for these two and you know clear clear through 90 percent of the map without like you know any trouble at all, trouble at all but yeah that's pretty much it um thank you for watching this this um my, my tier list video i'll include the tier list in the description below i'll make an update to it and then include it in the description below so you can take a look and kind of use it for yourself and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.